Black True Crime is a podcast that researches and discusses murders committed by Black offenders. It is a podcast that everyone and anyone is welcome to enjoy, but it's also a podcast that may not be welcomed by anyone and everyone. So listener discretion is advised. Now, without further ado, this is Black True Crime. Hi, everybody. Hello, everyone. We're back and we're cheesing like, I don't know, somebody's (laughs) birthday is today. I have no idea what's going on with us. Actually, I do. I think we're super excited for this episode. Okay. Who are we, Kristen? Okay. Well, I'm Kristen. (laughs) And I'm Kayla. And you might be wondering why we're doing things backwards today, meaning me saying my name first because that never happens. Yes. It's because today is the day where I basically tell you guys the case. Kristen, not Kayla. I'm the lead host. (laughs) I'm the lead host. And guys, honestly, I'm so excited for this. It was my birthday last week. My birthday is July 21st. And I celebrated it for five whole days. So that's why I didn't really post anything on Instagram and Twitter and Facebook, stuff like that. But Kristen decided that she would do me a solid and research a case for us this week so i'm super excited about it and yeah let's the crazy started. thing is it was a joke <laughs> 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 we were recording our last podcast i mean our last case and i joked and said it would be cool if i you know did the case for your birthday and then kayla took it as serious as bible yeah. so then i was like dog on it i'm gonna have to do it yeah but it's a great segue into this because um, me and Kayla may start something moving forward mm-hmm. where I do at least one case a month or whatever. We haven't decided on the logistics yet about specific cases. I'm not going to tell you yet what those cases involve. But yeah, yes. so just if you guys like this, because I'm, I'm kind of nervous, I'm not going to lie. If you guys <laughs> like me telling you guys about a case, researching the case and stuff, then let us know in the comments mm-hmm. and email us at Black True Crime Podcast mm-hmm. at gmail.com. Good job, period. Mm-hmm. And um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or DM us on Instagram is the easiest way for me to resp- reply quickly. Right. So, yeah. Also, before we get started, I want to shout out a patron. Um, I don't know if it's a girl or a boy or if she or he identifies as a they. I don't know. But their name is Pigs. And I was obsessed. As soon as I saw the name, I was like, Pigs! So shout out to you, Pegs. Thank you so much for joining our Patreon this month. And hey, if anybody else is interested in joining our Patreon, visit us at patreon.com at Black You Crime Podcast. And you can get different tiers there. So you can get a lot of information. I mean, a lot of content from us. And you get to see our faces when we record these type of episodes. And I got my hair did so I don't look as homeless as I did last week. Mm-hmm. She looks cute. <laughs> it's, giving, it's giving long hair mini okay mini thank you thank you also <laughs> we always do this we take seventeen thousand years to start the episode so for because sake, people also want to hear our voices and not tragedy that go along with the voices so i revel in these moments yeah. do they <laughs> <laughs> i don't know oh god okay so I'm let's so get excited. into it all right let's, let's get go. into it kayla this is crazy okay I'm ready. (laughs) In 2007, minutes from the bustling downtown Cleveland area, a young couple was doing their best to raise their two little girls in the not so pleasant streets of Central. Mm. What seemed like a story about two kids fresh out of high school struggling to do right by their little family would would soon turn into a tale of tragedy where the underbelly of domestic violence, depression and mental depletion is revealed. Mm. Join us. You can't be infant. Okay, okay, okay. Join us as we discuss the horrific case of Amber Hill. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't wait. I couldn't wait. I'm so excited. Okay. Born on April 1st, 1985, Amber Hill was born and raised by her mother, Carolyn Hill. 
I couldn't find much on her background at all. So Kayla, oh my God, I commend you so much for the depth. <laughs> no, seriously, for the depth that you go, how deep you go into the background of these victims. It is extremely hard finding documents, written biographies about these people. You mean like, the victims or the the killers? No, the I'm sorry, did I say mm-hmm. victims? Mm-hmm. Um, about the killers. Mm-hmm. I commend you for how deep you go into research about the killers and their background specifically, because I could not find a lot about Amber Hill at all. Yeah. It was very hard. It's but difficult. I found something. Cool. But I just wanted to commend you. Shout out to Kayla. Y'all, this is not easy. <laughs> and I still feel like once a month is still a lot. If I'm oh my God. This. But anyway, commend you, Kayla. Hats off. Thank you so much. Mm. <laughs> okay. But what, <laughs> okay. But what I did find was that family members described Amber in her teenage years as very lively, bubbly, and always smiling. So at the age of 18, Amber was pregnant with a baby girl that she would name Janelle Centrone. Mm. Now, Janelle took the last name of Amber's boyfriend at the time, which is Janelle's her, father. Her baby Jamie, daddy. Right, her baby daddy. Mm-hmm. Jamie Centrone. He was 19 years old at the time. Mm-hmm. So Amber was 18. Jamie was 19. They had a baby girl. Very young. Um, yeah, okay. So... <laughs> Amber and Jamie went on to have another baby girl two years later. Oh, baby. Yes. So at this point, Amber was 20, Jamie was 21, and they had another baby girl, and her name was Success Hill. So Success took the last name of Amber. Okay. Janelle, the oldest, took the last name of Jamie. Correct. Um, Now, I could not find the timeline of this, but Amber and Jamie eventually moved in together to raise their children together in the same home. Nice. Um, okay. Amber was living with Jamie Cintron and their two little girls in a small apartment on Woodland Avenue in Cleveland, Ohio. She was attending the Cleveland branch of Remington College while taking care of her two children, and Jamie worked at Burger King. <laughs> so I'm like, there has to be some other income. She must be getting loans or something. Somebody's because selling drugs. Burger King? Paying mm. rent? Okay. Mm. I'm 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 definitely slanging if I have to work at Burger King. I, that's not gonna be my only income. So <laughs> period. <laughs> Which we don't know if Jamie was slanging or not. They didn't say. No, I would be. If, I know, I know. <laughs> I'm just saying. If he was slanging, he didn't get caught. Good. Okay. <laughs> the couple's relationship unfortunately was known to be toxic. Jamie was convicted of domestic violence against Amber twice. In the most recent domestic violence case, violence case in 2006, Amy, <laughs> Amber and Jamie were fighting and Jamie picked up a hammer and struck the TV with it, breaking it, obviously, grabbed Amber by the neck and threw her on the floor. Oh, my God. So, yeah, a lot. Family members believe the physical and verbal abuse Amber experienced from Jamie contributed to the changes that they would later witness in her personality. Mm. Amber began to show extreme signs of depression. Her personality started to take a turn for the worse. She started to get paranoid and started to withdraw from her classmates at Remington College. She even stopped attending classes. Mm. She was convinced her classmates were talking about her behind her back. Oh, no. Which is like, even if they were, you're going to stop your degree so you can tell it was something. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Like, I don't give a fuck. Like, you, if you guys knew me in college or high school out of the five I went to, everybody talked about me. Everybody. And somehow it just made me want to be even more in their face. So (laughs) it was like you reveled in it. It was the weirdest thing. (laughs) Okay. But yeah, hold on. These children are fucked beautiful is this a joke you no, guys will see the pictures on I instagram don't wanna go. i don't want to finish this story why'd you pick this one Girl, it was hard to even find one oh, you're so cute yeah the girls are beautiful okay 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 moving on 
Amber told her family and friends that she would sometimes cut herself mm. and even contemplated suicide. Mm. So she was really going downhill. Right. And this was right after Amber was pregnant. She had her babies. She was going through it with Jamie. Um, so they feel like she was going through postpartum depression mm. as well as physical and verbal abuse from Jamie. Yeah. Amy told the court that one week before the tragedy that would soon come, Amber failed to pick up the girls from daycare one day. Mm. He said she had recently experienced the death of one of her cousins and came home later that night and just immediately went to bed without a sound, a peep, didn't talk to the girls, didn't talk to him, went straight to bed. Wow. After not picking them up. Right. So in the midst of going to school, living with her abuser that she also loved, mm -hmm. experiencing auditory hallucinations, mm. which we will get to, suicidal thoughts, and postpartum depression. Amber was trying to parent her two little girls in the midst of all of this. Oh, my gosh. Until one grim day, Amber's sanity finally cracked. Fuck. Oh, I mentioned that she was going through auditory hallucinations. So through this process or this time of her life, these four mm -hmm. years um, that Janelle was growing up and success as well, Amber would tell her parents um, that she would hear voices. And it wasn't like she was so vocal about this because if you're hearing voices, you're not going to just tell the whole world. No. But she would sometimes tell her mom. Um, and that's what I mean by parents. They don't really mention her dad. They mention her mom. Yeah. She would tell her mom sometimes that she would experience these voices. And she said especially one was demonic. And it would tell her to kill herself. Jeez. Yeah. But sometimes she would hear her mom's voice. Sometimes she would hear her sister's voice. Sometimes she would hear her boyfriend's voice in her head. Wow. She was going through it, child. Like, okay. And that's the thing with the black community and stuff like that. What year did this stuff happen? 2007. 2007. 2007. Like, we really have to stop having a stigma about mental health. Why? And the H-E double hockey sticks is it's such a big deal that, oh, if I'm having thoughts about killing people and myself, why, why, why is it such a big deal that I go get help? You know what I'm saying? Why is it such like a, a feeling of, un, of uncomfort to tell somebody in my life that I am suicidal? You know what right. I'm saying? Like, that's so scary. Could you imagine being in a situation where you just feel like maybe you're not even suicidal, but a voice in your head is telling you to kill yourself? Like, there's the fear that goes along with that. You know what I'm saying? It's just I feel bad. I do feel bad for her. Me too. And I honestly feel like it goes back to that stigma of like, well, you're hearing these voices in your head. Like, we don't have health insurance to take you to no doctor. Where are we going to take you to the <laughs> ER? You right, know what I'm right, saying? Right. Like, yeah. you better pray about it. And, and, and yes, prayer does work. But there are yeah. also natural steps that we have to take to yeah. make sure that that person is being helped. AKA Period. put me in a fucking asylum a home a hospital or at least give me a psychiatric eval yeah like you know deeply. let me talk to a psychiatrist let me talk to a psychologist something mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. okay so yeah and also i wanted to like shout out resources as we go i don't know if anybody is in college right now and they're experiencing something similar to this or maybe a minor form a more minute form but it mm -hmm. still worries you mm -hmm. colleges have free resources you can yeah. go talk to psychologists um yeah you might feel like they don't work but literally just getting it out to somebody who yep. is impartial to what you're talking about mm -hmm. will help you out so i encourage yep. you to do it Absolutely. At USF, we went to the University of South Florida and you could just walk in there. I think it was like you could get like two free 30 minute sessions or something and just go in there, tell them what you're going through, stuff like that. And they can recommend the best way for you to move forward. Yeah. So if the resources are there, are there, please use them. Like we don't want people out here killing other people or even themselves because of, you know, a mental health issue. It's just Absolutely. it's not something 2021 should still be seeing. So, yeah. And if your parents' excuses that you don't have health insurance, go get free health care. Like, Google tell them to it. kiss your free ass. Health care. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, the story begins. Mm -hmm. um, on October 1st, 2007, Amber woke up feeling very overwhelmed. She spent the beginning of her morning crying in her bedroom. 
Fox News actually stated that she spoke with her mom that morning about going to the hospital to be seen. Mm. So as she proceeded to get her two baby girls ready for the day, because she never she didn't know if they were going to go with her mom while she was going to be seen, like things were up in the air. She was just preparing. Right. She prepared their bath and helped Janelle and success into the tub. While she is standing there watching them wash up, she thought about taking them out and putting their clothes on so they could get going about their day. I wish she did that. (laughs) Right. (sighs) Then those voices came. The Mm. same voices that have been haunting her for months, if not years. Her mother's voice, her sister's voice, and her boyfriend's. Once telling her to harm her own self, now turn their attention to her children. Mm. She heard them telling her, urging her to drown her two girls. Oh, my God. These are her her people's voices that she's yeah. hearing. Yeah, which is, like, even more crazy. You That's know? crazy. And she specifically said that there was a demonic one, and then yeah. she would sometimes hear her family. But now yeah. it's her family's voices telling yeah. her to kill her children. Yeah. Ciao. Something's going on. Like... God, I wish I understood this stuff. I wish I fucking finished my master's. That's what I wish I did. <laughs> this stuff is so, it could happen to anybody. That's what's so crazy. A traumatic yep. experience, like giving birth, you know, something my man wants me to do in the next two years. He's got me twisted. You know, could completely like mess up the chemical balance in my brain, you know, and then make me suicidal or homicidal. Yep. And also there's something spiritual to that too. Like there's a natural part, but the spiritual part is like the girl wasn't ready and something in her cracked both naturally and like emotionally, her spirit was just drained. Yeah. I wish we knew more about her childhood to see like, you know, what type of stuff she was going through. I was literally thinking about all the cases that you found so much information. Literally half of the podcast would be about these people's backgrounds <laughs> yeah. and I could find nothing. I was not happy. I was like, she's going to some source she paid for that. She's not trying to tell me. I'm screaming. I don't pay for a sheet. <laughs> <laughs> I just dive real, real deep. Girl. Okay. Well, I'm going to get a head start next time. <laughs> okay. So after months of living with the voices, um, basically, combating them not killing yeah. herself right not hurting her children amber finally complied 22 year old amber drowned her her eldest child first janelle okay. Centrum. the oh. eldest thrashed in the water trying, <laughs> trying desperately to come up for air against the weight of her mother's hand are you fucking joking me was that necessary was that detail necessary Listen, I like to write. So when I saw this, <laughs> it poured on my heart and I just went to town. I'm trying oh to God. create a visual, which the visual is horrible. But yeah. this is real life, y'all. People go through this. So listen. <laughs> okay. Then Janelle stopped moving. Mind you, her little sister's success is in the bathtub right next to her. Oh, my fucking... Could you imagine how successful? I just want to hug that baby. Okay. This may be the darkest case that I've heard, and I didn't even do it. Wow. Out of all the stuff that we've heard, I just feel like the de- the details that you're putting me into are just hella, like, traumatic and yeah. low-key triggering for me. So let's get through yeah. it. <laughs> no, it's for real, because, like, we're sisters. Like, I couldn't yeah. even imagine seeing our mother, someone we're supposed to love, take my sister out in front of me. Exactly. Oh, child. Okay. Oh, babies. So, as she proceeded to now hold her youngest success under the water, Amber told authorities that the toddler looked up at her mom through the water. (gasps) Once the deed was done and both girls had been drowned, Amber then closed the shower curtain, left the apartment, and walked to a payphone close by. She called her boyfriend, Jamie, and told him what she had done. She stated that their children were finally at peace. (laughs) On her way back from the payphone, she stopped to pick up their mail at the mailbox and saw a check in there that Mm. she thought about cashing later that day, as if she had done nothing wrong at all. Oh, 
my whole ho, ho, horde. Like, continued about her day. Ugh. <sighs> So, while this horrendous act was taking place, Amber's mother, Carolyn, was already on her way to the apartment to take her daughter to a psychiatric evaluation at Metro Health Medical Center. Mm. So, did her, did her mom know that what happened already? No. Her mom <gasps> had no, no clue. She just thought Amber was getting the girls ready and she was going to go take Amber to a psychiatric eval. Yeah. Don't so, worry. Carolyn stated to the court... I came in and Amber was standing in the middle of the room like a zombie. She was looking right through me. There was no soul, no nothing. There she realized that her two grandchildren had just been drowned by their own mother. Soon after, Jamie, the children's father, busted in the apartment and found Amber sitting silently on the sofa. And choked her the fuck out. (laughs) Because... That's the only response. <laughs> he didn't. Because he still thought he had time mm-hmm. to save them. Um, he So he busted in the apartment and found Amber sitting silently on the sofa, staring ahead with a blank expression on her face. I'm assuming the mom somewhere. I don't know. I don't know. Um, me either. <laughs> <laughs> As he's frantically searching the house, he asked Amber where the girls were. She told him that they were in the bathroom. So he runs in, sees that the shower curtain is closed, and yanks it back, only to find his two girls naked and immersed in the tub. (sighs) So Jamie at this point is screaming, why, why, as he's pulling his baby girls out of the water, and he immediately calls 911. Which I'm like, did the mom not call 911? Where is she at? Like, where is this bitch? Where does she go? No, I don't know. She probably, the only thing I can hope she's doing is like throwing herself off the roof at this point. Cause I'm like, for you to not, nobody has called police. You know what I'm saying? And then Amber's just sitting there doing absolutely nothing. Like, what is the time frame of this situation? I just, I can't. I can't. In the middle of the day, to be exact. Like, in the middle of the day. She actually called Jamie at 1230 o'clock in the afternoon Mm -hmm. saying, 1230 o'clock. 12.30. (laughs) Anyway, 12.30 in the afternoon, cut it, Um, that her kids were at peace. So that means that she had already drowned her kids by 12.30 in the afternoon. So, yeah, neighbors heard the commotion and immediately came to see what was going on. One of them also called 911. The paramedics who testified during the trial stated that by the time they arrived at Woodland Avenue apartment, the scene was chaotic. Mm -hmm. Family and neighbors were frantically trying to explain to them what happened. It was not clear for them until they discovered the lifeless body of Janelle. Her Mm -hmm. skin was pale and pruned, lying on a bed upstairs. Oh, my God. They carried her downstairs where they also found success lying on the ground with her father weeping over her. Oh, baby. So I kind of thought, why was Janelle upstairs and success was downstairs? You know, like at that point, like did they, were they bringing the kids downstairs after he laid them both on the bed? So I was just kind of like, I mean, maybe it was just like, I don't know. Maybe it was just, who knows what was going through his mind in that moment. You know, maybe he just, Picked one of the children to like hold on to, you know what I'm yeah. saying, and just weep. Yeah. Ball. Yeah. Yeah. So even though things were already looking very grim, the paramedics still tried to do all that they could to resuscitate Janelle and success. Mm-hmm. They suctioned fluid and performed CPR on the two children, but water just kept coming from their noses, their ears, mm-hmm. and their mouths. Their ears their ears they were like submerged the water at this point is in every hole crevice lungs oh, everything Jeez Louise. so it was too late throughout all the commotion amber remained in a dissociative daze just mm. staring in the distance mm, mm, mm. coroner ruled the cause of death to be drowning He even considered adding strangulation as a factor for the four-year-old Janelle because of the ligature marks around her neck Mm -hmm. and the bleeding blood vessels in her eyelids. Jeez. So it was kind of like her mom, like, maybe held her down by her neck, you know? 
And because Janelle was stronger, she was mm-hmm. forced. She was a little bit stronger. She had to hold Trying tight. To fight. Yeah. yeah. Oh, Kristen, honestly, I feel destroyed. I never want to have kids. Like, if I had to experience the pain that Jamie is feeling right now, I'd probably just kick the bucket. Like, you know, Jamie make was two holes ground. Oh my god, he was upset. So as he should be. What the heck? Those are, those are his two girls. Right. Ciao. <sighs> Okay, so the worst part's over. So on, on October 2nd, the next day, mm-hmm. 2007, Amber was charged with two counts of aggravated murder in the Cleveland Municipal Court. Cool. Her bail was set at $2 million, $1 Jesus. million for each of her deceased children. Yep. At the time, she did not enter a plea. Mm. So, fast forward now, Amber has gone through psychiatric evaluations, one from the court um, appointed psychiatrist, and then right. one, I guess, from the defense's side. Yeah. Um, so, this is a couple months later. On January, I'm sorry, this is two years later. <laughs> yeah, 2009. <laughs> 2009. Mm-hmm. On January 8th, 2009, Amber pleaded not guilty by reason of insanity. And on Thursday, January 15th, 2009, she waived her right to a trial by jury. Wow. Can we just pause for a moment? It took two years Mm -hmm. for them to finally have her back in the court and to actually trial. I mean, um, try her. Oh, yeah. It takes it usually sometimes it takes longer than that. Like there's people in jail right now that have been there for five years just awaiting trial because they can't make bail or they don't even have a bail. So it's like. You know, right to a speedy trial, my ass, my right. ass. Just imagine, like, Jamie sitting there for two years having to to come to realization that his girls are gone. And yeah. the girl, the woman who did it, the one he thought he loved, but also mm-hmm. beat her behind, has not been tried yet. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I forgot he was abusive as fuck. Oh, mm-hmm. my gosh. He's a part of the problem. Lock him up. By the time Amber's trial began, she was facing the death penalty for the murder of her two children, Mm. and she was not offered a plea deal, which basically means that the case against her was a slam dunk. They had everything they needed. She didn't say that she didn't kill them. She didn't deny it. Right. Um, So they didn't need her help for anything. So why offer her a plea deal? I agree. Since Amber waived her right to a trial by jury, a three-judge panel would try and render a verdict in her case. Really, lady? (laughs) How'd she go from the couch over here? I don't know. She says she wants to be a part of it. She sees that you're you're emotionally distressed. (laughs) And she's coming to be an ESA dog for once in her life. Thank you, Pooh. I appreciate you. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) I'm also looking at this picture of Amber in court. Kristen, she looks batshit. I think they had to have been going for that. I'm like, even her hair. I'm like, you couldn't have done something. Like, come on, bro. You could have done something. Well, at the time, that appearance in court that we're talking about, she had just <laughs> been, they had basically escorted her from the suicide um, oh, jail cell. Oh, yeah. So she was wearing a black jumpsuit, a paper mm-hmm. jumpsuit. So it doesn't give her any way to hurt herself or harm herself yeah. in any way. Yeah. So yeah, she's gonna look a mess. Um, I mean, but she's not she's not wearing that in this picture, but she Oh, I'm, are you talking yeah, about I'm the look, older? Yeah, I'm looking at the 2009 one. The one where she looks like You're right. Just like she's destroyed. Oh my god, behind her lawyer. That one is rough. That one's And rough. that was actually the day after she committed the crime. So that I was 2007. Okay. Yeah, that was probably her arraignment. So you still think she looks crazy when she's like all cleaned up and chunky? But that's what I'm saying. That's cleaned up. I think she looks batshit. I think she needs to be in a home. Like, if I like, I, I see her, I'm like, no, she's not okay. Like, she's not okay. She would have fooled me. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't see anything extra, but okay, good. Right. I'm glad you see it. Because yeah. somebody should have saw it three years ago. I agree. Three years prior. Okay, so... Amber's lawyer told the judges that two psychiatrists would testify that Amber had a history of postpartum depression and that her mental state had been spiraling downhill. 
to the extent where she even attempted suicide multiple times. One of those psychiatrists was court appointed. And despite telling the prosecutors that Amber was in fact having auditory hallucinations of her family members urging her to kill herself, and in some cases her children, they still decided to prosecute Amber and to the fullest extent of the law. What the fuck is the point of having psych evals and having someone tell me that I'm not, I'm really just not in the right mindset to stand trial. You know what I'm saying? I'm not competent enough. And then they're like, nah, I guess, you know, fuck that, whatever. I believe she's competent, so that's all that matters. What is this justice You are system? preaching to the choir. And she's, sp- the, the prosecutor specifically asks the judges at the end of the trial to disregard the psychiatric evaluations for one moment. Why? And you try to pull on their heartstrings, but it's like, are you dumb? Like, that's the whole point of having the psychiatric evaluation. She's not a normal criminal anymore. She has had a psychotic break. Yes. Literally. Her psyche has broken. Like, she's not even aware that what she did was wrong. You know? And and, and I don't I don't really know because I don't know the the results of the you know psyche vows or whatever like that i mean they did say that she was suffering from we're gonna get to it okay great 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 i'll shut up go okay (laughs) they claimed the prosecutors claimed that this was an important case to the community and deserved the criminal justice system's full attention Mm. now the prosecutors had all the evidence that they needed and even a confession from amber she -hmm. was not denying that she drowned her girls They argued that Amber wanted to get rid of her girls because she was not happy with her life and felt like the girls played a part in her entrapment. They argued that Amber was aware that her actions were wrong, which is Mm. why she closed the shower curtain to conceal the horrid acts that she had just committed. You remember when she closed the shower curtain? Yeah, I do remember that. That is the dumbest fucking thing I've ever heard. Continue. However, (laughs) I'm crying out. Okay. However, the defense refuted the argument with the fact that Amber told the court that she closed the curtain because she did not want her babies to be exposed and that she wanted to keep their bodies safe. Twisted, but this is what she was thinking. Yeah, yeah, a person with mental health issues and auditory hallucinations is not going to make a lot of fucking sense, you guys. <laughs> like. Yep earth to whoever is in charge of this shit show and the thing is it kind of went beyond the auditory hallucinations because or i guess in order to for the auditory hallucinations to convince amber to actually drown her kids they must have been telling her you're saving them you're keeping them out of harm's way because you're going through it things like that and the um the defense lawyer even said that amber stated that she thought that she was saving them Mm -hmm. from a fate that she would give herself. So basically by killing herself, she would have left her girls without a mom. And so she thought that she was saving them by killing them. Okay. Um, And and we have heard that excuse used before, but not with someone that legitimately have had multiple people say, Hey, this person is not well in the head. Like they were not in their right state of mind when they committed these crimes. Yep. Okay. So, Witnesses, including family and friends, testified. They also testified that Amber loved her kids and that she was a proud and protective mother that always kept her girls clean, neat, and very well-mannered. Side note. One thing I did find when I was researching um, this case, I saw Mm -hmm. some other times that Amber was um, appearing in court, and I found a minor misdemeanor in 2004 Okay. Where Amber was charged and found guilty of an illegal U-turn and a child restraint system. So that basically means that her child was not secured in a child safety seat like a car seat. Right. And I didn't think that was a big deal because I'm like, girl, bye. Like, mm-hmm. we all have those times where you're rushing out to the grocery store and, you know, whatever. Yeah. I don't have kids, but I'm sure somebody has made this mistake once or twice. Correct. Our, our At- own mother. Right. <laughs> At that time, though... Success was not born yet, and Janelle would have been one or two years old max. So that means yeah. there's a one-year-old baby or a two-year-old baby yeah. not in a car seat. So that's kind of dangerous. And if she's, yeah. where is she? Is she mm-hmm. in the seat next to Janelle? Is she in the back seat? Because she's one. So right. 
And then Janelle she was convicted thriving. for this. So I guess it was like kind of a bigger deal, yeah. you know? And I just, I was saying Janelle. Janelle's not driving. Amber is driving. <laughs> Amber is driving. Janelle is one. Janelle? Yeah. <laughs> one years old. <laughs> okay. The detective that interviewed Amber directly after the killings even testified that Amber told him that she heard the voices of her mom, boyfriend, and sister telling her to kill her children. Right. The two psychiatrists testified that Hill's severe depression eventually escalated to a psychotic break from reality when she killed her children. Mm. Um, After four hours of deliberation, the three judges rendered that Amber was not guilty of aggravated murder due to uncontroverted evidence that Amber was not aware that killing her daughters was wrong. Mm. Carolyn Hill and the other relatives were sobbing and thanking God that she did not receive the death penalty. Because if she was convicted of aggravated murder, two counts, she most likely would have received the death penalty. For sure. So at this point, the prosecutors were pushing for a long term institutionalization of Amber Hill at a high security facility because they believe she posed a risk to herself and others. So after the trial, the judges were given some time to decide whether Amber was to be set free or admitted into a mental institution. Like, no, she's not being set free. What? Set free? Is that even a joke? To but be locked wrote, in her mother's basement for the entire, like, the rest of her life? Because what the fuck? You can't to be beat up by Jamie because Jamie will find her yeah. and most likely try to kill her. And then okay. Jamie will be in custody as well. They decided that Amber would be institutionalized at North Coast Behavioral Healthcare System, a high security psychiatric facility, and she would stay there indefinitely. Amber was given the opportunity to address the court and told them that she felt truly blessed to be found not guilty by reason of insanity. One of the judges on the three judge panel interrupted her to say that the law required that finding and that it was not a blessing from God. Oops. He specifically said God didn't intervene on that. God didn't intervene on behalf of your children. Oh, my gosh. That judge was, like, looking at her in disgust. Completely disgusted. I'm glad he still followed the law, though. Like, the prosecutors were clearly willing to bend every law that they could. So, yeah, I'm glad that, you know, they see that. Okay, he had his own opinion. Right, right, right. She's clearly ill mentally, you know, but what she did was unspeakable. The judge continues to say, if I were in your situation, I would swear to almighty God to take that medication every day of my life. Mm -hmm. So you are never in the situation where you feel so horrible that you don't know how to control yourself and take an action that is repugnant to society. Wow. (laughs) You felt the anger, the disgust in that passage. Yeah. I'm like reading that like, now I feel justified. Like, I feel like somebody told her how angry I am about this, even though it wasn't me. You know, I just need I need her to know how wrong it is, because regardless if you had control over what you were doing or how you were feeling at that time, your children are dead, miss. You know? Yeah. So. She and they were saying that, like, um, once. OK, I'm just going to I'm going to continue. OK. At the psychiatric facility, Amber has been receiving antipsychotic medications that are meant to reduce the auditory hallucinations and assist her in becoming more lucent, lucid or coherent. Okay. Um, I wanted to add a little tidbit. Antipsychotics, they are medication that primi- primarily block a chemical found in the mm-hmm. brain. Right. This chemical is called dopamine. Mm -hmm. Um, And what it does is it blocks dopamine from specific parts of the brain. So after two to four weeks of correct treatment, the voices in one's head should start to fade out. And you are supposed to continue treatment until they are completely gone. Mm -hmm. Um, So basically it says correct treatment, though. So there's a dosage limit, a dosage amount that you're supposed to administer to make sure it's effective and one dosage amount for one person could be different for another so mm-hmm. there's a lot going on there mm-hmm. it's a science like it's medication you know it's you could die <laughs> from that shit so yep 
So hopefully Amber was and or is receiving the treatment she needs because mm-hmm. I could not find any information on whether Amber is still at North Coast or mm-hmm. not. Um, they said that there will be a later hearing, which is which was completely up to the court mm-hmm. on whether they would um, take Amber out of that high security psychiatric facility and place her into a lower security one. Okay. Or set her free. Mm -hmm. But that decision could only be made by a judge in a court. Right. And I could not find any other case or any other court appearance of Amber going back to the court and having that decision be made. So we can assume that she's still in North Coast. Oh, my goodness. Is that our case? And that is our case. Oh, my words. Well, I really, really hope that she's still locked up somewhere because I doubt, I mean, I don't know how medication work or if it's actually really possible to, you know, be rehabilitated from auditory hallucinations. Like, I don't know too much about that. We should probably get someone on the show to talk about that. But, you know, I feel like she needs to be watched for a while. And I'm like, at the very least, like, even if you th- even if you're in a state of mind where you're not sure what you did was wrong or not, I still feel like there has to be some type of punishment attached to it. So even if she's in that hospital for 10 years or 15 years or something like that, that's, I feel like that's literally the bare minimum of justice that those two girls could get. You know what I'm saying? I also feel like, so yeah, that's the bare minimum of the natural cage that they can put her in basically. Mm -hmm. But also once she becomes more lucid about what she actually did, yeah. if she genuinely did not believe what she did was wrong, now that she's aware or now that she will become more aware, mm-hmm. she's going to torment herself. Like yeah. she killed yeah. her own two girls that she loved. Right. Like this isn't someone who was neglecting her children. This is someone who was protective over her children, who kept her kids clean and neat. Mm-hmm. And, and they were so... so- effing cute like even her hair when she got arrested like her hair looked you know like good and and better than my hair half the time you know what I'm saying so it just seemed like she really really tried to take care of herself and those girls you know despite all the shit she was going through yeah like she was even telling her mom she was reaching out to somebody to be like I need help but unfortunately help came too late oh my gosh this is so it's just heartbreaking it's different if she was just like oh i have these hallucinations whatever bye you Mm. know but the fact that she really went out of her way to try to get help because she was putting herself in danger yep you know and her children in danger if she chose not to reach out and she was like that's not what i'm gonna do i'm going to reach out and i really pray that that was a factor in what how they handled the situation Mm. you know because i mean it wasn't even like she didn't try. She was just, she had no control at that point yep. over that um that outcome. And that was really fucking sad. It really is. And like, you could tell at the end that her mom was still riding for her and rooting for her because she was like saying like, Amber was not herself. If Amber was herself, she would have never touched her kids. But because right. mental health is serious and she mm-hmm. wants to bring more awareness to mental health, yeah. um, she thanked the court for ruling for a non-guilty plea because of insanity. Yeah. Jamie, on the other hand, was still very upset. And he basically said that he felt like they were being too kind to her Mm. um, because he said specifically that those girls did nothing to deserve that. Yeah. So it was kind of like he was just still so hurt. So yeah. pent up, so much anger pent up against her. Plus, he was already beating her up. I so. was about to say, Kristen, he's he. She gave him another reason to hate her more than he already yep. did. <laughs> because Which, you can't I'm sit like, here and tell me you love me, but you're beating my ass. <laughs> <laughs> like I, I know, you know, domestic violence is a very dark situation. That's a whole very different twisted. ball game, you know. But if someone is physically emotionally verbally mentally hurting you they don't that's not what love is you know what i'm saying yep so she was just getting it from every single which way that she could and couldn't handle it all and her her literal psyche fucking broke like it could happen to anyone that's what terrifies me you can't trust your own fucking brain 
Mm -hmm. that's why like there's like just like you have to exercise your body to be strong like you Mm -hmm. have to go through mental exercises meditation is one of them other people do a whole bunch of other stuff they just go in a room and be quiet and just shut up for an hour you know like they go to a place that they love or something like that because like you have to exercise your mind because your mind can literally break under pressure and y'all know the age we live in so much criticism so many so much stimuli so much stuff going on so when we say protect your peace we mean it Mm -hmm. it's an active process I just feel so bad for those kids I feel bad for Amber like I just feel bad it was a shit situation and for fuck's sake I just hope it doesn't happen to anyone else you guys please get help I'm fucking begging you if and you if you see it. somebody in your family or your friend group or somebody at work who's going through something, yeah, leave a little card on their desk, bro. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Now, at this point, like, we have to care about people that we don't even really bang with because yeah. they could impact your life and impact an innocent life because yeah. you didn't say anything. Yep. But, yeah, well, that, that was – you, you did a great job, Pooh. Thanks. Aww. That was a lot of work. Yeah, yeah. Welcome to my existence. Right. Try doing it every week. <laughs> but you love it. I mean, I enjoy it. I I bask in it. But <laughs> <laughs> I'm so happy though. Like, Yay. I I feel pat on my back for this one episode. Pat on my back <laughs> a thousand times more. <laughs> I've done this one thing for your podcast. I will not be doing another for at least a year, like, if I'm even still here. <laughs> I'll do one or two more. No, for real. Like I'll take a month and I'll dedicate a whole portion of that month. And little by little, I will form, you know, um, mm-hmm. create the case and do research and stuff. But just doing it all in such a small amount of time, that was like, oh, gosh, this is a lot. And yeah. I want to go more in depth, but whatever. Yeah. Um, but thank you guys for watching us. Thank you for hearing this case. This was a doozy. Yeah. Love you guys so much. And <laughs> <laughs> we will see you guys next time. Bye. Bye bye. <laughs> you have a right to kill me. I have a right to do that. But you have no right to judge me. <laughs>